everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, licensed professional counselor, and welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing Married at First Sight, season 15, episode 16. This isn't best friends at first sight. At this channel, or on this channel, I should say, we get curious. We do a quick therapist review and I utilize internal family systems, which is the type of treatment that I utilize in my practice to get curious about what's happening with these couples and in these couples and inside themselves as we saw a lot happening as they are close to decision day. It's next episode is decision day and there are a lot of protectors up. If you are curious about internal family systems, I do have many videos uh, about internal family systems on my channel feel free to lean into your curiosity and take a look at those if you are returning back welcome back and welcome to the curious ones family as again we lean into our curiosity here because we want to learn we want to learn and we want to learn more about ourselves and relationships and of course be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and of course comment below let me know your verdict is it going to be a yes or is it going to be no on decision day? Now let's get into it. First, we have Kristen and Mitch. I have to say, Mitch's nieces are adorable. They're so, so adorable. Oh my goodness, too cute for television. Kristen and Mitch, they are doing their nighttime ritual together, doing masks, having some quality time, having fun and being intimate with each other. Kristen meets with her friend. And of course, this is the episode where they talk with their family and friends to determine how they feel, what questions they have. To really voice voice it out, sometimes talking it out can make things so much clearer. Uh, that's why therapy is really beneficial. But talking things out can make things clear and can make you hear what you're hearing in your head to say, hmm, I need to think about that a little bit more. She's talking with her friend and Kristen, Kristen is definitely an enigma to me in the way that she says, right now in our relationship, I feel calm and I feel at peace. And so then a part of me is like, oh, okay, so you're feeling great about the relationship. And then she says, ah, but I am so torn. I don't know what I'm going to decide to do. So, of course, I'm feeling like there's a part of her that is still thinking about the Mitch of yesterday. They had a very bumpy ride, especially beginning their marriage. And that's something that she needs to listen to. That's something that she needs to take in. And so... She's torn. She stated that there's a lot of good there in her relationship with Mitch. And at the same time, she is craving, craving validation. And she wants, she wants him to be able to give her that validation without her asking for, without her blatantly saying, this is what I need you to say. She wants to hear the words from him. And she's been saying this. For a long time, you know, for some weeks now, she's been saying this to Mitch. So her friend asked her if she's going to give him the opportunity, the opportunity to make the change. Because what happens if she does commit after decision day and things don't get better? She said, oh, then my eggs will will get dried up. So she really didn't answer the question exactly. She just stated that the part of her that's really concerned about kids or having kids that part's going to be worried. That's what I hear her say. And my eggs are just going to dry up. Like, so this part of her is really concerned about her timeline of her having children. And so that's, that's putting a lot of pressure on this relationship. There's a timeline. And that is a big factor. That's a big factor for women because of that. And, and thank goodness that medicine has improved some so that a lot more women are having children later in their life. And at the same time, it's still something to, to take into consideration. And also, I'm concerned. I have a part of me that is concerned about her saying yes and sticking with this relationship because she wants children and that being the, the determining factor. I, I do feel like she does care for Mitch and she sees a lot of great qualities in him. And at the same time, I'm curious if she is really wanting to be in this marriage, right? Like if this is really what she wants. Mitch met with his brother and he stated that they went to the group retreat and talked about how he got introduced to this like really fun side of Kristen. And he said, oh, I really, I really like this side of her. I'm really enjoying this side of her. And then the next day 
he went on his conference. He went to his conference and he's like, oh my goodness, this single Mitch is a completely different person than the person who I am when I'm with Kristen. And he said, I didn't get to surf much and I haven't been riding my bike much. And I, I think that this part of Mitch that's searching for um, searching for his identity in this marriage or is concerned about that, that the measuring stick, the measure stick that it's using with the type of activities that he's doing to make him feel like himself. Um, it seems like he needs some reassurance that he's going to be able to do that. Is he saying, I wonder what everyday life with Kristen will be like. And his brother asks him, so I hear you. And at the same time, when you guys are just like in the car or just hanging out and nothing's going on and you're with each other, are you enjoying each other? And he's like, yeah, we are a great partnership. And his brother said, I think you don't realize how rare that is like to have a trust and a partnership between each other. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Like that's, that's marriage. And it is one of the beautiful things about marriage, the trust and the partnership and having each other's back. It's a beautiful thing on the group date with the rest of the couples and everybody's giving their updates. Mitch stated that he still, there's still some uncertainty for both of them. They're still questioning and working things out. And Kristen stated, well, you know, I just need him to say, and she gave him a roadmap. Like she did what she said she wasn't going to do with her friend. She said, if Mitch were to tell me X, Y, and Z, then I'm, I will say yes. If he told me that he's committed to our life, if he told me that he's thinking about the future plans with us and with me, I'm going to say yes. And that always brings up a concern. Uh, there's a part of me that's worried, right? There's a part of me that's worried that Kristen saying that out loud, then Mitch will say that to keep her. The other side of the coin is that there is also a part of Kristen that knows that Mitch won't say something if he doesn't truly mean it, right? It's one of his, it's one of, um, it's one of his strengths. And at the same time, it's also, ah, there's this stubborn part of Mitch, we know, right? Shirtgate, all of that. There's this stubborn part of him that doesn't like to feel control, doesn't like demands, doesn't like for someone to tell him what to do. So I'm curious how he's receiving this information in front of everybody. He 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 was pretty quiet afterwards, but I'm just yeah, curious if he's going to find his Mitch way, right, to do this. Mitch and Kristen later on had a romantic date. It was very nice. Um he did state though that he could make a commitment. He could not say I'm 100% committed and and open to to this life with you and I don't feel like I'm in love with you but I do love you and I do cherish you and I do believe you're a beautiful person however Mitch did state that after this experiment or you know this experience that they're having that he wants for them to kind of go along as they're just as a couple right this is concerning for me because there's a lot of ambiguity in this. And and Kristen has a part that has the same concern. She said, hey, I just want you to know, like, I need some clarity. I need to understand what's happening. And at the same time, the way she does it, the way she does it is very diplomatic. And I'm not saying that, that that's not great. Like, there's a part of her that has this diplomacy and it's considered about its feelings. You know, that is that's that is Kristen. That's true to who she is. And and at the same time, I there's a part of me that wants her to be even more clear to say, hey, if we're going to be married, this is what I need it to look like. Because I feel like there's a part of me that feels like she's taking too many concessions. She wants a declaration of love. And ha, you know, like, I feel that love has to happen when it happens. And there's a part of Mitch that's scared, that's scared of losing himself, losing his identity. Again, he's a person who their independence and who they are, that's a part of their his core. That's a part of how he survives. And so he's feeling scared. He's feeling unsafe. I hear it. And I see it. And at the same time, you can see the tug of war. He's saying he's seen people and men in his life, you know, not take the opportunity. And he is scared to lose her. He's scared to lose her, which Kristen, she takes, she receives it. You could tell like it's feeding the part of her that's wanting that validation. And at the same time, 
I am curious on how they're going to navigate this. And they talk about it a little bit in in the scene at the end uh, as they're having their last night together that Kristen says, hey, Mitch is going to be Mitch, whether he's in an apartment by himself or if he's living with me. And Mitch agreed. Mitch agreed. I hope that they have further communication about this living separately because we have seen how it went last season. We saw, we saw how it went and a married couple living separately. I know that there are people who do cohabitation and, and there's no knock to them. There's no knock at all to that because this is married at first sight. It's different. It's different. Their, their relationship is being molded and it's so fragile. It's still very fragile. And so separation and going back to single Kristen and single Mitch, that is going to make it harder for them to bond, harder for them to attach and trust their connection because that's what I feel is coming up for Mitch. That's what I feel. Again, he said on the bed, I'm curious if it is like just those other people, like I didn't meet the those other people or if it's me. And I'm going to say to Mitch, hey, it could be both. And at the same time, there is, there is this part of him that's scared to attach, that's scared to commit. And it may be because his family was divorced and how his divorce just truly, you could tell it, it hurt, it hurt him. And he has created this like a rebel part to protect him from that hurt. It, it, it has, you know, very rigid demands of others and even himself. So he has to, to decide if he's going to commit to what he wants. Because Kristen has already decided she's shown up. And so to ask her to make another concession, there's a part of me that's concerned about that that's truly concerned about that their last night in the apartment it was very very cute um that luna slept in the bed with them they had some cuddles he was able to give her a little doggy treat after she got her you know her ridges and her skin cleaned out and everything he's like accepted Luna and her snores and her and her loudness um and so that I know that meant a lot for Kristen to have them in the bed together um so that's really beautiful there's a part of me that's like dog sleeping in the bed I don't know but to each his own so my verdict my verdict for Kristen and Mitch is I think that there will be a yes for both of them on decision day that they're going to continue to move forward in this marriage they may not be 100 percent committing to this marriage you know from death do us part but they are committed to working at the relationship so i will i think that there will be a yes for both of them on decision day next we have lindy and miguel lindy is talking to her sister and she stated they had some bumps along the way but they were able to work things out um, with her attention and her sister said that she has the same issue so I wonder if this is a biological thing with attention as they both say that that's something they have and it's difficult because it's something that you know Miguel was taking personally in that moment but I do feel like that was like a boiling point like things were just like boiling over and they really both they both exploded And so really working to communicate with each other. And they're trying. You see that they're really trying this episode. And so she said that one of her issues she has is that when she does something that Miguel feels is wrong, that he will stonewall her. He will reject her. He will push her away. And that's something that activates her. It triggers her. It is, you know, it's it's a form of rejection. It truly is. And it, it really is. Now, if he stated to her, and this is the issue, though, that Miguel has to work on, uh, is improving his communication. And so instead of saying, Um, instead of rejecting the hug or saying, hey, Lindy, I want you to know that I need to take care of myself right now or I'm not at my best and I want to be at my best. I'm I'm upset. I don't know why I'm upset. I want to really sit with myself and kind of figure this out and come back to you when I'm ready to or when I when I feel like I'm able to be my best self with you and communicate it. I don't want to come from a place of anger. 
is it going to take him time to get there? Absolutely. Because there's, he has these polarized parts, right? There's a part of him that is a pleaser, is accommodator, is a server. He has this part of him that's like, I aim to please and I'm here to, to be what you need me to be. And then there's, there's times where though this part gets very tired. It gets very tired. And this, I need to know that I matter to you. That's what that was coming from. This big explosion on this group retreat. It boiled over. And and ironically enough, something that he really planned for her became really unpleasant because it was just boiling over. The impact of that, right? And some of you have called him mean and nasty. And I understand that because the impact of that is not okay, right? The impact of that is he hurt Lindy's feelings and he was abrasive right and he even owned all of that her sister gave her some some advice she stated that you know they're they're figuring these things out they're figuring out what each each other needs and they need to take some time to continue to do that because they're still getting to know each other and to figure out who needs what from whom in those moments right she used some language that I got a little curious about saying who needs to be taken care of or who needs care the most you know at the time of the conflict because oftentimes both both parties need care both parties need care and and so what do you do, right? What do you do when that happens? Both people need to be seen and heard in a marriage, right? And so emotionally, if one is undone, then really that person who's undone needs to take care of themselves. What we tend to do, the parts of us that are wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard, needing to be heard, we try to make the other person see us, hear us. And it's not saying that they don't need to. They do. They do. They need to validate us. And we also need to take care of ourselves. So it's like this ebb and flow, right, in their relationship. And that's something that they're going to have to navigate. You know, we, we've we seen this part of Lindy that has expectations for Miguel to care for her. And because he has a caretaker, caregiver, server part inside of him that is looking to take care of Ah, the shadow side of that is his needs don't get met. And when his needs don't get met, he's not his best self, right? We, we've seen that. And so one of the things that I wrote down in my notes is, yes, marriage is holding space for each other, right? Holding space for each other. Lindy will have to hold space for Miguel and Miguel will have to hold space for Lindy, meaning holding space sitting with, being present with, hearing them out, allowing them to say what they need to say without taking it personal. And that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of work because you have to understand the intent of what somebody's saying. And right now they're still on the impact, right? As they had that conversation at the end of the episode, uh, the last night, that they were together and she's like, oh, I don't like saying, I don't like being called disrespectful, right? And I, Cause that wasn't me being disrespectful. That was just me being inattentive. And at the same time, there's a part of me that says, oh, Lindy, maybe you do need to though work on being more attentive too, right? So not saying that you can't interrupt or have your, your attention drift away, but be aware of it apologize when it happens and try to try to be more aware uh, because no one likes being ignored. Nobody likes being ignored. And Miguel stated, hey, I don't really like being viewed as someone who's controlling because in my mind, I'm just telling you what I need. I'm telling you what I need from you or what doesn't work for me. And Lindy said, hey, well, it it kind of does feel like controlling because when you say you don't like something, then you say, well, I won't accept this part of you. Like, I won't accept it. And there's this rigid part, right, that comes up of, oh, I'm going to be over accommodating. I'm going to be the server. And at the same time, there's this part, right, that's like red flag, I'm out, right? So we, we've seen that red flag, I'm out, <laughs> like a referee. Red flag, game over, right? And... And so there's with that that rigid part that that protector he has up to make sure he doesn't stay in a relationship that isn't serving him. 
it is the impact of that is controlling ah is controlling and we've talked about that where there's hurt there's control and so for Miguel to get curious about that to get curious about is there a middle is there a middle is there a way that you can communicate a boundary without impeding on who someone is at their their core and also with out making this person feel like they have to do X, Y, and Z in order for you to accept them. And so, um, so for example, at the group retreat, when Miguel was saying, hey, don't ever use that tone with me ever again, right? That was, that was a very controlling statement. So how can we do this? Hey, I don't do well. I don't respond well. I don't respond well in when you use that tone of voice or when you get escalated in your emotions. I I get activated, right? And so it seems like he's not aware that that's something that activates him, that triggers him. It seems like he, he goes into a place of freeze and and flight, right? Those are his his responses. And so I don't do well with that. I don't do well with that. And I really would like for us to find a different way to communicate with each other versus I'm not going to be able to deal with that. The relationship's over. Right. Like, let's work through instead of it being completely done. Miguel stated during the group date that they had with the other couples that, you know, things did get pretty heated and, you know, it has made him have some really big, serious doubts about about their relationship. And so he he made up for their winery trip that they had on the group retreat and took her on a wine tour. And he took some accountability. He It was reluctant, right? And I feel like the reason why it was reluctant is because he's not speaking up for the part of him that needs to say, I didn't feel valued or I haven't felt valued in this relationship. And I don't know if he has that language. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he has that language. And he stated that he didn't like who he was and how he made her feel. And he's trying to learn from it. He's really trying to learn from it. Lindy stated that she's trying to assess if having a filter, not being able to say how his behavior is impacting her, if that's too much for her, because she did have, you know, a kind of a word, a word vomit moment where she really gave her friend everything, all the things she's been feeling, right? And and that was a lot for Miguel to hear and take in as well. And he wants to be able to hear the things that are concerns for her. As they continue to talk, he talks about not feeling like he's able to be the pillar of strength she needs and not really feeling like he's able to maintain this role that he's been maintaining for the majority of this marriage. Uh, and he doesn't know if he has what it takes because Lindy is emotive and her emotions are high. I believe her high emotions are something that activates him. And I'm not saying that there are some things that Lindy needs to address, right? With her emotions, her big emotions, big emotions. There are some people who lean further. Uh, there are some people who lean further on the emotional scale. And there's some people who lean a little further on the rational, logical scale. And Miguel is very much a part, he has a part of him that's very intellectual, right? And so he's coming from an intellectual space with trying to understand his emotions. And that's why I think he's getting a little lost because emotions are not logical, not one bit. (laughs) They're not, they're not logical. And so oftentimes the logical and emotional mind clash a lot. And we're seeing that in this relationship. And so it's something that, that he gets baffled and he doesn't know what to do with. And he's he's trying to figure out how to navigate that. My prediction, my prediction for this couple, I'll say this. There's a part of me that wants a yes for this couple because I do see where they have some great stuff. If they were to able to do some good couples counseling and also some individual work to really get to know themselves better and also uh, to work on communication and understanding each other and and how to really understand the intent of what they're communicating because they do well they do well with having a conversation about the impact they do very well with that they take accountability 
and at the same time need to work on the intent and the meaning behind the intent right the protection that's in there they need they need to to discover that a little bit more so i do hope for yes i feel like there will be a mixed decision one of them is going to say yes and the other one's going to say no i don't know which one my guess is that miguel will say no and lindy will say yes but we shall see Cause that logical mind of his is, 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 is in the driver's seat. It's in the driver's seat, especially because this is a very high stakes situation. And so he's doing like a risk cost analysis here. And, and I, I, I believe that that's going to potentially make him lean more to the no. If he says yes, I'll be excited, but I feel like he's going to say no. Next we have Alexis and Justin. And Justin is talking with his mother about his concerns. He said he's worried. He's worried that Alexis is going to say no. And uh, and his mother is saying, okay, you're scared. You're scared. Um, it seems like a part of her is maybe dismissing his concerns or maybe feels like she's coming from a place of no knowledge, right? So there's what she knows, like historical data of what she knows about Justin like he has a fortune teller part that no that feels like he knows what's going to happen and that it's going to be bad and she feels like that's what's being active in this situation. That may be happening and at the same time he's got a lot of data. He's got a lot of data to really take in and he's maybe he's trying to protect his relationship with Alexis and not really telling mom all of his doubts and all of his concerns and worries and the red flags and how she's communicated to him that she's not really attracted to him and how she's communicated that she doesn't know if she has what it takes to be married to him. And he said, I gave my away thinking that it was going to be 100% yes. And she's saying 90%. And two days ago, I was saying for sure, no. But now I don't know. And she wants to be more dominant in the bedroom. And I, that's not who I am. He said it. That's just not who I am. And there was a very funny mother-son freaky conversation uh, about, about what Justin needs to be. And at the same time, mom did come back and say, well, hey, if she doesn't accept you for who you are, then maybe she's not right for you. And that is where... I met with with this couple. Um, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced that Alexis, all of Alexis really wants to be in this relationship because a lot of her actions have said quite the contrary, truly have. And so Alexis is talking with her mother and, you know, she says she's torn. Her mother said, hey, I completely understand why you're torn this short period of time. Like, how can you make such a big decision like this in a short period of time. Alexis stated that Justin is gets in his head so much and he overthinks everything and she can't get in his head to help him navigate that or to comfort him through that. There's a part of me because I've seen Alexis in action that sometimes will work diligently to tell Justin what he's feeling is inaccurate and um, because she's coming from a place that's logical, right? And at the same time, if Justin's feeling it, there's a reason why he's feeling it. And that needs to be validated and to get curious about it. And so when Justin gets in his head and, and overthinks this part of her that's this part of her that feels the need to manage his feelings or manage his thoughts, is scared about about that or feels out of control, right? Doesn't feel like it has control over his thoughts and his actions and what he's thinking and feeling. And I'm curious about if Alexis is taking into consideration all that she's thinking and feeling because she spends a lot of time, right? She spends a lot of time managing Justin and I'm curious if she's really sitting with Alexis and really attending to her thoughts and feelings. She stated that they've had struggles. They've had a lot of struggles and they're in this protective bubble and they're on, on with the training wheels. And if it the training wheels come off, are they going to go off the rails? Are they going to go off the deep end? And Alexa's mom said something that was, was really meaningful and it made me curious too at the same time. She stated that, hey, I don't want you to stay in this marriage because you're known 
for being a runner. I want you to know what you want. And I said, hmm, does Alexis know what she wants? I feel like Alexis is undecided about what she wants. I I think that Alexis wants a gentle soul like Justin, right? And at the same time, she doesn't like the package that he comes in. And again, she has some internalized shame about feelings and being vulnerable. And so she's not vulnerable in this relationship. And her mother goes on to say, because marriage is beautiful. And so it seems like her mom is trying to convince her, convince her that marriage can be a beautiful thing. And You know, I know that her mom and her dad uh, separated or divorced. And so I'm curious if she believes that that plays a part in how Alexis views relationships. If there's a part of her that's like very skeptical and very hesitant to commit because of that. On the group date, Justin is talking with, with the fellow castmates and he's saying that, oh, he feels like he's just in his head and his mother also agreed that he's in his head and he will write his own tale and navigate from a space of he knows what's going to happen in the future. He's like, wow, I didn't know I was like this. And how long have I been doing this? And so he's he's becoming more aware of this behavior, right? So this is, and this is a real thing. Again, she's coming from the known knowledge. And at the same time, and at the same time, Justin also needs to listen to the parts of him that are concerned and have concerns in this relationship. He really does, right? Because we see, we see on the date where she's saying that, hey, I'm really hopeful for us. And at the same time, like you coming to this realization, like that was a big part or one of the big parts of my concerns in our relationship. So I'm glad, but I'm also skeptical. Like, man, is this going to continue to stay? Is this continue to work right are we going to be committed to doing the work are you going to be committed to the work and then what do you need from me and Justin said hey I just I need you to initiate I need to feel desired I need to feel like you're attracted to me and initiate and she said "Uh, I can but and then Justin kind of cut in before she was able to finish that and I'm curious if that was a part of him that was scared about her finishing that statement because her face was like very flat, right? So it wasn't like, I can, but you know, there wasn't an excitement about initiating uh, intimacy or physical intimacy with him. And so I really wanted her to finish that statement because Alexis, huh, while she has this part of her that is is honest and very direct, she also, she also has like an artistic part of her, right? That paints a picture, paints a picture uh, to protect someone, to protect their feelings or to protect herself. She paints a picture and, and the picture oftentimes, uh, it's not honest. It isn't. And then she says, hey, I really feel like we've had some great times and we'll be good together. And at the same time, maybe we're better, better off as friends. And I'm like, Alexis. Now, if Justin were to take these words and then use this as the determining factor for what he's going to say on decision day, would he be overthinking and overgeneralizing then? Because this, listen to what you're saying. And I, I, this is where the the picture, the artist, the artistic part of Alexis, like, hey, I don't understand why you have doubts. And then he could rattle off like five or 10 or 15 things, right? Or reasons why he has doubts and has concerns. My verdict for this couple is that there will be a no for decision day. There may not be uh, both, you know, both people may not say no, um, but I feel like there's going to be a strong no on decision day. And a part of me wants it to be a no on decision day just because Justin needs his dog. (laughs) Justin needs his dog. And he also needs to be in a relationship with somebody who wants him. And Alexis needs some time to figure out what she wants and how to trust herself to be vulnerable in relationships. Last, we have Stasha and Nate. Stasha is meeting with her friend and she's discussing Nate's concerns. He has big questions. What's going to happen? If we start, you know, things don't work. Am I going to be homeless? What's going on? And 
Stasha, she has this part of her that's like really annoyed with this question. She's like, why are you wanting the worst thing to happen or thinking about the worst things that could happen, right? Nate's looking for some reassurance. And really, the ironic thing is both of them, both of them were looking for reassurance. Both of them had parts, right? He's looking for reassurance of, are you going to be loyal to me? Are you going to have my back? Are you going to be patient with me? Right. And she needs reassurance to say, are you, are you really in this? Are you really working towards bringing your walls down to be in love with me, to really truly be in love with me? That's what they both need. But I'm getting ahead of myself. And so her friend is like, hey, it's not going to happen, but he's looking for that. He's looking for that reassurance. And she said, I want you to be happy. I want you to be happy. Uh, I'm rooting for you guys. But I also want you to to know to see if he is the person for you. And she said, yeah, we're we're go getters. We're both so much alike. We are we are in sync. I really feel like this is this can work. And also she feels like she is further you know, emotionally and and emotional intelligence than Nate is. And so she has concerns about that because he's never been uh, in a relationship where he's been in love. He was living with someone for two years and didn't really feel like they were in love with each other. And so she's like, are we going to be in a relationship where you're just in it and we don't love each other? That's something that's not going to work for her. Nate is talking with his father and his sister on the phone and he's talking about some concerns. He's like, hey, I'm being more vulnerable. You know, I'm putting myself out there. He said, I also am like becoming a different version of myself. I'm becoming more vulnerable. I'm taking down some of these walls. And he said, I'm relying on someone. There's a part of him that really honors independence, right? And it's hyper independent. Both of them are. And and he's nervous about letting that go and releasing that. Will he still be himself? He's never seen a vulnerable Nate. He's never been this vulnerable Nate. Will he still be himself and be vulnerable and relying on someone? It's, it's a really big question for him. Again, it's very similar to Mitch. Am I still going to be me? Am I still going to be me to my core? And that's scary. And he's looking for reassurance from Nate's dad. And dad was like, ah, well, you know marriage it takes some time ah well I've been married yeah but like he had more things to say and he was trying to stay positive that's what I get the sense like he was trying to come from a positive space versus talking about the the negative spaces of marriage but really for him determining like is this relationship going to work for him and if he has any other concerns he said well yeah I do because she wants kids she's 37 and wants kids right away and I don't know if I'm going to be stable enough financially. So it's part of him that's still concerned about that. And then there's part of him that's concerned about having kids right away and not being able to live life. And she thinks it's going to be fun. And his dad said, hey, you, you'll still have fun. And, and yes, he, there is, it's possible to have fun. And at the same time, your life drastically changes. There's no, there's no way around that. Your life drastically changes and you can still have fun and just be a different type of fun and so that helped to give Nate some reassurance he was able to receive that from dad and so at the group date they're talking giving updates on their relationships with the cast and they said hey we do we do need to work on our communication a little bit and then and then Stasha says well I you know I really feel like Nate doesn't have a lot of experience in emotional relationships and it can be a bit irritating because I have to teach him things and explain things to him over and over again and he doesn't want to hear what I'm saying and doesn't want to receive what I'm saying and I want to help Stasha in this moment and say it's not that he doesn't want to he doesn't trust you enough he doesn't trust you enough to receive what you're saying because he doesn't know you he's only met you for two months and and Nate is coming from again he's also a risk analysis kind of guy he's more leaning to his intellectual mind he's and so because of that his journey through this process is going to be slower 
then someone who is coming from a space like Stasha is more optimistic, more like I'm in this. I want this to work. I'm going to give it 100 percent. He's like, I'm giving it 100 percent and I'm also being measured right in my 100 percent. It's going to keep growing day by day, week by week, month by month. And and it's going to take time. However, Stasha's demanding part and the part of her that is seems to be un- impatient. Ooh, it has it showed itself this episode once again. But Stasha feels like Nate receiving from his dad that having kids can be fun. She there's this part of her that's taking it personally because he's not receiving it from his wife. And it's like, ah, Stasha. Ah. He has more lived experience with his father. It is also his father. And he knows his father knows what it takes to parent children. Where you don't. And you live in a white palace <laughs> with um, thinking that you're going to be able to control children from spilling things and writing on the walls. That's not a realistic view, right? And so coming from his experience of you, there's a part, there's a reason why he questions. It's not that it's a her issue, right? This is a Nate issue. Nate has, has Nate has his walls up. Nate has his walls up. And He's going to take them down when he feels safe and at his own pace. And the more Stasha and the more Stasha pulls, pull, tries to pull down those walls or ask about when are you going to take that brick down? What about that brick? What about that brick? What about that brick? That's going to make this part of him, right? This rebel part of him because he has that. He has that part, right? Right. And it's going to, it's going to resist. It's going to resist because he's like, I, it's me. I'm in charge of my walls. I take them down when I'm ready. Now it's up to Stasha to determine if she has enough staying power for Nate to trust his process, to trust his process. This is the, this is the work of relationships. And this is tough too, because they're married at first sight, right? So they don't know each other. And they both have issues of trust and abandonment. So this is they have parts of them that are seeking reassurance often and from each other. And at the same time, just like Lindy and Miguel, they have to do some work to reassure themselves too through this process that no matter what happens, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll get through this. That doesn't mean it's not going to hurt or that it won't be hard. Right? And at the same time, they can get through this. They need to reassure themselves and also be able to reassure each other without minimizing, without Stasha minimizing Nate's efforts and without Nate communicating in a way that's mean and hurtful. Stasha and Nate sit down for dinner and Stasha asks, hey, what are there any concerns you have any issues any questions that you have or need to be resolved before decision day and he said you know yeah yeah I do have some concerns like I I just want to know like are you all in are you all in like okay what are your biggest flaws and I'll say this I understand why Stasha was taking it back by that question uh, because she feels like she's been an open book Uh, And at the same time, I'm curious about what Nate was really trying to communicate with that question because you could see the frustration on his face when Stasha didn't like address it. So there was something there already that he was looking to to address, maybe to see, maybe for her to take ownership for how she had, you know, spoke about their relationship at the group date and He's saying we have to we have some communication issues and then she states in public what he needs to work on and he's emotionally not where I need him to be. You know, so I don't know if that's where he was coming from, but I'm really curious about what that question meant for him, what he was trying to get to. And maybe he didn't have the language or he was trying to come like indirectly because Nate Nate has this part of him that is very direct. It does not hold back. And we saw that. As the dinner moved forward, but you could just tell this, this started the brewing of, of this huge, just communication 
just bomb. It was it was it was awful. The their communication at this dinner, you could tell they just were not hearing each other. They really were not hearing each other. At the end of the dinner, Stasha said in her confessional, oh my goodness, Nate, he just hears what he wants to hear. He creates his own narrative. And I'm like, oh, no. Again, Stasha, this isn't something he's doing purposefully, right? We all have parts of us that have beliefs about what different things mean. And and, and so for love, right? The word love, there's a part of Stasha that has the definition of what love means to her and what it looks like and feels like to be loved. And Nate has the same, he has a part of him that defines what love looks like and what it looks like in action, what affection looks like. And they probably are different. And that's what, that's what caused a lot of this uh, this explosion at the dinner because he's like, I'm working to show you my affection. I am here. And so even the language of her saying going through the motions, he has a thought in his mind about what going through the motion means to him. And it's not that he's creating a narrative. The narrative is already there. The narrative is already there. And so he's taking in from his lens, from his experience, what those words mean. And he's like, oh, so you think I'm faking it? You think I don't I don't mean what I'm saying? I have this tattoo on my hand. I'm showing up for you and you don't you don't believe me. And it seems like what Stasha was looking for in that moment was reassurance to say, I know I'm not there with the L word. I know. And I know that's something that's really huh, becoming distressing for you. And I just want you to know I'm here, like I'm working, I'm working. And, and unfortunately, because she was coming from a place, uh, coming from a place where there's a part of her that was either like making assumptions or judgments about what his behaviors were. Like she doesn't, she didn't know the intent. I don't see where she asked for the intent of his gestures of affection and gestures of connection with her in her mind you're just going through the motions and so it feels dis- dismissive to him and and so then you dismiss over and over again somebody's efforts who are really trying really trying to show up and work on themselves to pull down their own walls to be more present to be more emotionally aware when they're fighting themselves Ah, that's real work. And so when you do dismiss, ah, then they they give up because then they feel like it's not enough. It's not enough. My efforts aren't enough and you won't ever be satisfied. And so this shows up again when they're in the bed and Stasha is holding Nate to the standard of you didn't use the tools. You didn't use the tools. Do you are you she wants to know like there's this part of her that wants the reassurance that the lashing out won't happen again or realistically the lashing out will probably happen again and Nate is going to continue to learn and to be more self-aware of his emotions you yourself said Stasha logically right so logically she knows he's not there emotionally where he's able to be more self-aware and be able to communicate from a space that is measured or able to say hey I need a moment and I want to come back to you when I'm I'm able to communicate from a place that is is being honest to what I feel versus coming from a place of anger right he's not there yet And it's going to take time for him to get there. Again, this is a patience thing, but there's a part of her that's demanding for it to happen right now. And then it won't happen again. That again is reinforcing that dismissal of his effort. Like, hey, I know I had a moment. I took my time. I came back. I held your hand. I let you know I'm not going anywhere. I got frustrated and I'm sorry. And he's like, I'm regretful. If that's what you want to hear. You hear that? If that's what you want to hear. (sighs) Ah. I don't know. I was a for sure for this couple. Like, it's going to be a yes on decision day. What happened in this episode, I don't know. I'm I'm undecided. Um, I'm undecided because Nate is very, very similar to McGill. Assessing risk. Ex- assessing risk. And Stasha having this part of her that is demanding. is very demanding. It's, it's not patient with Nate's process. It's not trusting Nate's process. Ah, that's going to be, it's going to be rough. I do believe 
that there's a part of him that cares for her more than he's saying. So I'm curious if, I'm curious if that part talks to him between now and decision day to say, hey, I know, I know she, she can be a bit much. And at the same time, we do really care for her. We really do. And we want to make this work. So I don't, I, I don't know. I'm undecided on this one. I'm really undecided. Uh, on this couple. Let me know your thoughts if it's a yes or a no on decision day for Stasha and Nate. And of course, for the rest of the couples, I'm really curious to hear from you guys. If you have stuck around this long, of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and as always, be cool, be calm, be centered.